It's going to be a fairly short video of me assembling my paddle shifters for my wheel project. Um, I did not design these from scratch. I used someone else's design from, from Thingiverse and just modified it towards my needs. Made it fit these standard uh, arcade style switches because I had them lying around since I built an arcade a few years ago. Uh, it's an arcade button. Uh, these are these are cheap, pretty standard switches. I'll try and find a link to where to get something like this and add it to the shopping list, but I just had these lying around. I also changed a couple of things um, in here. Uh, one of them being the original design had the uh, had the magnet here on the top uh, in the opening. So prints like this. So there was a little bit of infill here that needed to be removed, not a big deal. However, since it goes in here and then snaps up, uh, the magnet on top would always be pulling this magnet towards getting it out of there. And I've used man magnets to hold things together on projects in the past. Uh, and it works well, even if it's magnet to magnet when you crazy glue it in. But over time, uh, it's always pulling on it. So over time, it is going to get loose and you, you would have to re-glue it. So I changed the design a little bit towards having the magnet on the inside. So it it actually naturally pulls together rather than uh, rather than pulling the magnet out of its uh, its position here. Uh, I'll probably put some crazy glue in here anyway to hold it in place, but it's not really needed. It's it's friction held, and of course it's going to be pulling it further in, not out, with the magnetic force. On the top here, which is unchanged, uh, we'll need to put glue in. I uh, also strengthened the frame here a little bit because it was a little flimsy uh, and uh, tended to be breaking when I was messing with them. Uh, anyway, that's uh, kind of what I did there. I'll just go ahead and assemble one. First, uh, I want to put the switch in, which is uh, pretty straightforward. Well, actually, Let's not do that first. Let's first find my little handy file here. Uh, I want to clean it up a little bit just uh, so that because uh, there's edges of the prints, especially where they uh, and where it touch the uh, the base of the print plate. They're not a little bit uneven, so I just want to file that out a little bit. Clean them up. These are pretty tight fits. I also want to file out here on the inside a little bit so so the uh, the paddle has a uh, smooth movement in there so don't have to do a lot just to clean it up a little bit um, it will also when it goes into the base uh, the base is a very tight fit so it's, it's going to push it a little bit together um, so I want to make sure that it when it goes into the base it doesn't lock up the paddle just get any rough edges out of there similar with this uh, get the edges clean them up a little bit here i don't know about your 3d printer i, I use uh, uh what's it called matter hackers something like that for the print software and the, um, the supports are really hard to get out of this uh, i got them out but it's kind of harder than it should be, I feel, but it's going to be different for between softwares and, and printers. So I'm not going to be going into detail on that. Another change I did here is that uh, since I moved the the uh, recession for the magnet to the inside, uh, uh, it actually aligns with the, <laughs> the switch here, the hole, which I didn't realize. Uh, so I did a little bit of a, a angled uh, bit here to, to hit the switch. Um, that also serves the purpose of uh, shortening the throw of the uh, of the paddle switch or, uh, paddle shifters, which is for something that I wanted to do anyway. Uh, now, if you do, if you want to lengthen the throw. Uh, your best bet to do that is just to go back to the original design and glue in the magnet here, because that'll give you uh, a much further 
throw. Anyway, uh, back to the assembly. This, this goes on, on the bottom, the third one here, which I believe is the ground, if I remember correctly. Uh, get it in here. This is pretty tight. Uh, there's a small hole here, which is a three millimeter hole. I need, I need to push it forward a little bit to align with it. Oops. And it doesn't want to go forward, which probably means that I haven't cleaned it out well enough. Let's get it out. Let's clean this a little bit better here. These are very tight fits. You can make them a little bit bigger if you want, but uh, it's still gonna be a tight fit with the base plate. Well, I guess you don't wanna make that one bigger, so you might have to do more to redesign than you want to if you're gonna make this bigger. I probably just wanna pull out that file and, and then I wanna clean up this hole here. It's a little and also aligned, there we go. There we go, go through here. Make it pretty well clean and aligned. Now, so this group really just barely gets through so I can't really anchor it on the other side. Uh, I'm just going to make sure that the way I put it in here, that it, that it is pointing towards the bottom. So this is the side here. And this one points up. In which case, I'm going to do a di different direction here. Probably really doesn't matter since it's not going to go anywhere. It's pretty tight. It screws into the plastic here. I did not have, have well, my, my local hardware store didn't have three millimeter screws in the length that I needed. So this is actually not a three millimeter screw. This is a six by 32. But it's close enough. So now the switch is in here. Don't know if you can see them, see it on the video. This is all black on black here. So you can probably hear it clicking. Uh, next, you want to get a magnet into this. See, I, can, I stored a masking this one off, but it's at ends here, just so they don't uh, click together. It's not that hard to get them apart, but these are pretty strong man magnets. These are uh, rare earth magnets, uh, so. Just be careful with them, they can hurt you. Let's get a cute little hammer out here. And hammer it in because it's it is a tight fit. So glue probably, probably not necessary at all. There we go. Now that's in there. Uh, this here is a five millimeter screw, this hole. It holds the, holds the lever. Just align that roughly there. Get the screw going. Grab my crusty power drill because I'm lazy. I don't want to go all the way there because I don't really want to tighten it. I uh, want to keep this pretty loose. Um, I just want to get it on there, just to make sure that this doesn't come loose at all. A little bit of Loctite is always a good idea. For those of you that aren't uh, familiar with Loctite, uh, it kind of it locks the threads 
it's glue basically it uh, glues the thread together but not doesn't glue it permanently so you can still get it get it off when you want to but uh, it's not going to come loose because of vibration or stuff like that now I just put the magnet again in on top it'll find its own way it wants to snap in uh, it's of course opposite to the other magnet and so now we have a magnetic paddle switcher paddle shifter sorry and it is yeah it's aligning with that switch in here so don't know if you can see this but when i push it down it pushes on that switch now i'm not entirely sure about the um, so this is the base plate for for the for the wheel uh, the, the back plate really um, I'm not entirely sure about the how far uh, far out I want these to be so I'll probably print out a couple of uh, spacers that you can use here if you want to move them further out or further in uh, of course you'll have options on changing that also on the paddles because the paddles are going to be uh, bolted to to this in these two holes here these are also about three millimeter holes yep or or six by 32 if you're uh, going with imperial system you see there's grooves here uh, so wrong one. there's grooves here uh, and by the way it doesn't matter which one you use the reason why i said this is wrong one is just because i oriented the screw up because i don't have uh, a locking mechanism on the bottom there uh, but yeah uh, they do fall into grooves here you will have to clean out kind of snap in place uh, there are two screw holes here these are four millimeter screw holes which you will uh, permanently lock them in place with screws come through here this is pre-drilled uh, or actually in the, it's not pre-drilled it's the the print has the holes for you you might have to clean them up a little bit with a file like this or or just a drill um, but odds are not uh, but there is there's absolutely no play in this uh, but that also means that when you get this fresh out of the print, you're going to have to clean it up a little bit with a file. Not a whole lot, just a little bit to get the, that uh, first layer that smud smudges out a little bit to get that cleaned up. And then the other one uh, goes in on the other side here. That one is, is being a little annoying here. The screw there that's getting caught there we go snaps into place nicely probably won't be doing that with the spacers or i guess the spacers would snap into place nicely but i don't think that really matters because you're going to have two four millimeter screws here um, so i don't feel like you need to keep it in this uh, at this depth just because of the uh, of the uh, uh, ability to snap them in uh, will be securing them with screws anyway so this is a, about it uh, before I put it on the frame uh, let me talk a little bit about these switches if we have more up here as I said these are pretty standard arcade switches uh, and so when you buy your co control board uh, this is the one I bought and in retrospect it's not really the right one I might get another one before I assemble or I might not just go with this. The reason why it's not really the right one is because uh, it doesn't have enough switches. Originally, I wasn't planning on having as many as many switches as I do here. I got like uh, eight buttons uh, plus four encoders. Uh, and the encoders do take up a lot of uh, uh, switch connectors because uh, well, each button just takes one of these connectors. So there's 13 in all, if I remember correctly, on this. Uh, but each encoder takes at least two, because each direction that you turn the encoder is a button, right? So turning it one click this direction would be like a button click on button 30 or whatever, and the other one would be button 31 in the opposite direction. Then you can also on these encoders because they are also they have click actions. If you connect that, then that would be the third button 
certain um, uh, ports that you would use on here. So definitely run out before I get to that. Um, this has enough for me to, to connect the, uh, uh, the paddle shifters. Um, it's just used two connectors here that are going to S1 button. Um, the top buttons on the wheel, these here, uh, and the encoders. So that's what I'm going to co connect up uh, to start out with. Uh, and then I may later add the functionality on these buttons, these lower buttons, uh, and the, uh, the button press on the encoders. Uh, but I don't think I'll be using those. Uh, either way though, what you want to do if you want to have as many buttons as I've put on this wheel, uh, you'll want to get, so what, what this is, it's basically a USB uh, button encoder for uh, uh, a, uh, what do you call it, a arcade style stick and buttons. Uh, which probably explains why these connectors here uh, perfectly fit with with these um, arcade switches seem to be two standards uh, one is 4.8 millimeter I believe that's the size of this connector uh, the other is two point something I'm not entirely sure that is lining up with the 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 buttons that I have there in the wheel but probably they're, they're a lot smaller uh, since all of my wires are these 4.8 millimeter here, when I connect to, to this, I'm either going to have to uh, cut off the connector and solder it, or I'm going to have to uh, just clamp it on and put a little bit of solder to hold it. I'll probably do that because I'm lazy. That said, you can get these with both kinds of wires. Uh, so you'll be, be able to plug on these and on the, uh, on the arcade switches there, the larger ones. But you're always going to have to solder a little bit, I think, at least on the on the uh, encoders, and they are the trickiest ones because uh, they're very small connectors. Um, so you're not really going to get around that unless you skip the encoders completely. So yeah, what what you want to do if you want to have that many buttons, you want to get a control board for two stick. So basically, uh, a two-player arcade control box, or you can have two of these. Um, that works also. Some of those kits for two-player basically just have two of these boards uh, but you can also get a board that uh, supports uh, two players natively so uh, yeah that's pretty much it uh, I won't be connecting any of the wires yet because I still don't have my Fanatec podium hub which is uh, the direction that I'm going since I have a Fanatec base uh, and uh, I won't really see how much room I have in here or where I have room until I get the hub in here. And it's starting to look like I don't have a whole lot of room. I might have to make this box bigger or change the shape a little bit to get more, more space. The things that I want to get in there is obviously this, potentially another one of these if I want to add the other buttons. I want to get a small USB USB hub in there also. Probably this one here might go with another one so that uh, the phone uh, can connect to here. This can connect to there, potentially another one of these and just have one USB going out of the wheel. I don't want to have multiple cables going out of the wheel so I want to get that through a hub here. Um, so it's going to get a little bit cramped in here. I think there's enough space but I won't really know until I get the hub in and then I can uh, arrange everything else. Um, anyway, so here goes the back plate. Kind of snaps in place. Uh, five screws here to hold it once you're ready to go. Uh, and uh, see if we can do this for the camera here. Yeah, and then you have your, of course there's gonna be paddles, but uh, for now you just have these buttons for, for shifting gears. Very tactile, very nice magnets there. Thanks for watching.